Do what you can. The setting was the home of Simon the leper, one whose life had been transformed by the Savior. As he and his guests shared their testimonies of what Jesus had done in their lives, we can imagine the former leper's heart overflowing with love and gratitude to Jesus. The Woman's Devotion Mark chapter 14, verses 1 through 3 in the New King James Version. After two days it was the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by trickery and put him to death. But they said, Not during the feast, lest there be an uproar of the people. The anointing at Bethany. And being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came, having an alabaster flask of very costly oil of spikenard. Then she broke the flask and poured it on his head. The Passover is a festival commemorating the time when the angel of the Lord passed over the homes of the Hebrews rather than killing their firstborn sons as he did in the Egyptian homes. A meal was prepared and was eaten the same evening between sundown and midnight, since the Jewish day began at sundown. During the meal, this woman approached Jesus and poured an entire bottle of expensive perfume on his head and feet, wiping his feet with her hair. John chapter 12, verse 3, New King James Version. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointing the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. Mark chapter 14, verse 5, New King James Version. For it might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor, and they criticized her sharply. This woman performed a beautiful act of devotion. First, consider the price. This perfume was worth more than 300 denarii, or roughly what a common laborer would earn in a year. It was a red-tinted ointment derived from a specific plant in India, the kind of perfume oil only the very wealthy could afford. Maybe this woman Mary, Martha's sister, was wealthy. Some wealthy individuals followed Jesus. She might have kept it for a special occasion. In any case, she had perfume that would cost a year's salary. What prompted a woman to lavishly display her devotion? If Mary had been asked, she would most likely have said, I did it because I love Jesus with all my heart. A human soul falling in love with the Lord Jesus Christ is the essence of Christianity. Knowing Christ is a personal love experience between a human soul and his or her Savior. Love is not only something we receive, it also entails giving, and this comes at a cost. Mary lavished her love on Jesus, and it cost her dearly. Have you done everything you could? Has your devotion to Jesus recently cost you anything? Her devotion is also shown to be completely reckless. Mary poured the entire contents of the bottle on Jesus. It was customary to place a few drops of perfume on a guest's head back then. When people came to your house, it was an act of friendliness and courtesy. Mary, on the other hand, poured out everything she had on Jesus in this act. Love is the same way. It's a little reckless. Followers of Jesus must be head over heels in love with Him, completely sold out, and willing to do whatever it takes to serve Him and complete His mission. The Disciples' Reaction Mark chapter 14, verse 4, the New King James Version. But there were some who were indignant among themselves and said, Why was this fragrant oil wasted? Unfortunately, after Mary performed this extravagant and wonderful act of devotion, some were indignant among themselves and said, Why was this fragrant oil wasted? This appears to be something the scribes and Pharisees would say, but Matthew reports otherwise, that it was said by Jesus' disciples. Matthew chapter 26, verses 8 through 9, the King James Version. But when his disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this fragrant oil may have been sold for much and given to the poor. Those who claimed to love Jesus were the first to criticize this woman's display of affection for him. They saw it as a waste of time. Take note of not only the mentality, but also the carnality of that response. For it could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor, they said. That's correct. A year's salary could buy a lot of food and feed a lot of people who are hungry. That wasn't the real issue. The statement reflects carnality because Judas Iscariot was behind the disciples' criticisms. This, he said, not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box, and he used to take what was put in it. John continues. John chapter 12, verses 4 through 6 in the New King James Version. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? 
This, he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box, and he used to take what was put in it. The Lord's Emotion Mark chapter 14, verse 6, New King James Version. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me. This had to be a very emotional scene for Jesus. First, he was moved by the disciples' reaction and the carnality they displayed. So he told them, Leave her alone. Why are you bothering her? But he must have been overwhelmed with gratitude for this dear woman's loving act because he added, She has done a good work for me. The term good refers to a noble, beautiful work. Mark chapter 14, verses 7 through 8 in the New King James Version. For you have the poor with you always, and whenever you wish, you may do some good. But me you do not have always. She has done what she could. She's come beforehand to anoint my body for burial. Then Jesus said, She has done what she could. She couldn't do everything, but she was capable of doing something. Mary, more than any other disciple of Jesus, got to the heart of Jesus and the meaning of his cross. A close examination of Mary reveals that every time she's mentioned in the Bible, she's at Jesus' feet. Mary realized Jesus was going to die and be buried, and she said, I want to be a part of it. She was preparing to bury his body. Jesus praised her deed for its loving nature. Then Jesus praised her for her long-lasting deed. Mark chapter 14, verse 9, New King James Version. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. He stated that wherever the gospel was preached, the story of Mary's actions would be told. We know that happened because we're reading about it now. That deed was memorialized for all eternity by Jesus. Have you done everything you could? You can't do everything, but you can try. You can't win all the world's lost people, but you can win one. You can't console all of the world's lonely people, but you can encourage a few. You might not be able to teach the world's best Sunday school lesson, but you might be able to teach a Sunday school class lesson. When believers do what they can for Christ, their service is transformed into spiritual service. You can't do everything, but you can try. In this story, we see a woman expressing her love for Jesus in an unusual and magnificent way. Do everything you can for Jesus.